In this video, I would like to talk about state feedback and pole placement, which is a very uh, like fundamental uh, controller design in the state space uh, representation. Okay, so let's start with an writing a discrete time state space equation, which looks like this. Okay, plus h u of k. Great. Okay, so the first assumption in the state feedback controller design is that we assume that we have direct access of the states of the system. Okay, it's a powerful assumption, and we assume that we can either measure all of them or we can somehow estimate these states. Okay, so under these assumptions, we have a very powerful framework such that we can have, like, if it's a 10 dimension system, we have 10 different measurements. How we can utilize this, like, a relatively rich information uh, to design robust and highly, uh, like, performance controllers. Okay. So uh, one of the ways of doing this is the state feedback. So it is a general term, and uh, we will uh, technically adopt the pole placement approach to design our state feedback controller. Okay, state feedback controllers can be in several different forms. Okay, one form is this. Okay, we have a reference signal, let's say R of k. Uh, it can be anything. Minus k times u of k. Okay. So in the lecture notes, I skipped the R of K and the closed system becomes an autonomous system, which is also fine. But we can also some sort of like a reference signal such that we can uh, do step like inputs and we can track this kind of uh, reference signals. OK, so the goal is let's uh, writing the uh, state equations for this new uh, controller policy. OK, X K plus one is equal to g x of k plus h times r of k minus k times u of k. That's great. So if I just arrange it, this is equal to g minus h times k. And it's important, it's not k times h. It, then, uh, it will be like dimension mismatch. x of k plus h times r of k. As you can see, the input matrix is the same. We have a new reference signal. OK, that's good. But the whole point is we have a new system matrix or update matrix. So G hat is different. And K is a controller set that we can technically tune it to meet some performance matrix. Good. So what is the dimension of K? If this system is a single input system, K is simply element of Rn, so we have n degrees of freedom, okay, which is equal to the dimension of the system, which is pretty awesome. So if it's a multi-input system, which is even great, we have n cross p uh, degrees of freedom in, in our system. Uh, we can do even uh, like uh, better things, such as like robust control, optimal control. We can use this extra degrees of freedom for satisfying different kind of things in like practical or theoretical frame. Okay, so in this course, I generally concentrate on the single input case, especially in the state feedback control design. Now let's assume that this is a single input system. Great. Okay, so the question is, how we can choose k? How we should choose k? So the important thing is, like unlike p, pid, like other kind of controllers, the uh, number of parameters that we can choose is equal to the number of the states of the system. Okay. And in the idea of the pole placement or state feedback, the goal is trying to tune or like to place the poles or eigenvalues at the desired locations. Okay. And since we have n many eigenvalues and k has n many parameters, uh, maybe we can technically place the eigenvalues at any arbitrary location. Okay. I think it's great if we can do that. Okay. So if we can do that, what we can do is we can define a set of desired eigenvalue locations, lambda 1 to lambda n. OK, that's great. So uh, we designed that, which will give you a desired characteristic equation, right? Which is equal to z minus lambda 1. OK, let's say star, star, z minus lambda 2 star. It will give you a like, desired characteristic equation in this form, plus a1 star, z to the power m minus 1. It goes like this plus a n star. So this is a desired characteristic location. So if you technically characterize the poles before designing your controller, you have this. So what you can do is, OK, so you have g hat, which is equal to g minus h of k. You can 
compute the determinant of zi minus g minus h of k, okay, which will give you a new characteristic equation, which will have something like this, z to power n, okay, a1, z to power n minus 1, plus a n, like this. So what you can do with these two characteristic equations? First of all, this is we design, we define, we know all of the coefficients, but here we have a1 to a n that depend on, of course, the parameters of g, parameters of g, and unknown parameters of k. Okay, so hopefully, if we technically match all of the coefficients, a1 is equal to a1 star, a2 is equal to a2 star, maybe we can uh, we have enough degrees of freedom flexibility such that we can match all of the coefficients and in the final step the uh, eigenvalues and the closed up system will satisfy our requirements. So the question is can we do that? The second question is how we can do that? Okay so first question is easy. Okay we can place the poles of g of course or g hat at arbitrary locations if and only if g and h so the original system is fully reachable okay so this is very important if your system is fully reachable then you can place any pole or any eye at any location i think this is a very powerful idea so being fully reachable is one of the most important things that we want from a state space representation. If your representation is not fully reachable, first of all, we know that it's not minimal. Okay, so if the unreachable modes are stable, hopefully, otherwise you will have other problems. What you can do is you can redesign your state space approach to find a new minimal representation. You can still do this kind of techniques, right? Okay, so under this assumption, we can define the eigenvalues prior to designing our state feedback controller, then uh, technically apply the state feedback rule, we'll solve the equations, and we can find the, uh, the case that satisfies these requirements. Okay, how we can design that? There are uh, different ways of, uh, of doing this. One of the things uh, which is most straightforward is called direct design. Okay, and in this video, I will only cover direct design, okay? So uh, if your uh, system is second order and even third order, I think direct design is the computational most efficient and easier to understand technique. So in the midterms, uh, this is the only way that you can do. But of course, in the mini project or in like your uh, in research or in this application, since you will have computational tools, you can adopt different techniques. But the idea is very similar. Okay. Good. So what we do is let's start with an example. Here. x k plus 1 is equal to 1 0 0 2 x of k plus 1 1 u of k. Okay, as you can see, lambda 1 is equal to 1, lambda 2 is equal to 2, so 1 pole is uh, on the unit circle, 1 pole is outside the unit circle, so the system is unstable. Okay, so this is bad. So what we want is, we want that the output shows a deadbeat behavior or the state system. So what is deadbeat? Deadbeat controller is, if we have initial conditions, perturbations, that should die in a finite time. Okay, so if we can achieve a deadbeat controller only when all of the eigenvalues are located at zero. This is one of my favorite pole locations because we cannot do in a continuous time, especially near continuous time dynamic system. So this is our desired pole location. So since poles are very easy, what is our desired characteristic polynomial? It is like this. Z minus 0, of course, Z minus 0. It is Z squared. So this is our requirement. And we will try to achieve this requirement using state feedback controller. Okay, that's great. Uh, so what is G hat? G hat is equal to 1002, as you remember, minus H11 times K. Okay. So what's the form of k? Let's look at that. Okay, it is equal to k1 and k2. So in some textbooks, k1 and k2, the order of 1 and 2 are replaced, which is not important. The important thing is like applying the right techniques in the right way. Okay, that's great. So what is g hat? It's equal to 1002. It's equal to minus, I think it will be equal to 
K1, K2, K1, K2, that's great. This is equal to uh, 1 minus K1. I think great, yes. This is K1 minus K1. Z minus K1. Okay, this is no, this is K2. Sorry for that. Okay, that's great. And this is equal to, I guess, 2 minus K2. Okay, this is G hat. So what are we going to do? We will compute the characteristic equation, which is equal to determinant Z I minus G hat, which is equal to determinant of okay, Z minus 1 plus K1. K1, this is K2. This is Z minus 2 plus K2. Okay, so if you compute that, I think you will see that it's equal to Z square plus Z K1 plus K2 minus 3 plus 2 minus 2K1 minus K2. Okay, that's great. So let's rewrite the practice uh, equation. So P of Z is equal to Z square plus Z K1 plus K2 minus 3 plus 2 minus 2K1 minus K2. That's great. Okay. So, and it should be equal to P star of C. So, what is P star of C? Just Z square. So, Z square plus 0 plus 0. So, okay, that's great. So, which means that this should be equal to 0, this will be equal to 0. So, the good thing is the expression is linear. Okay, it's one of the powerful things about linear control systems. If you apply a state feedback rule, you take the determinant. Determinant is pretty non-linear operation because you are taking like the square and other than that thing is, but the coefficients are uh, coming in linear terms. Okay, so for this reason, the design should be much, much easier. So our first equation is this K1 plus K2 is equal to 3. That's great. And the second equation is 2K1 plus K2, I guess, right? Okay, is equal to 2. If you solve it, you will see that K1 is equal to minus 1, which is interesting. Okay, K2 is equal to 4. Okay, so especially for discrete time control systems, you can definitely see minus uh, depending on your location. So don't freak out. It's possible, and it's one of the like complications of state feedback controller. It may be no need to because it's really applying a positive feedback at this component. We are not doing it too. Okay, so as you can see, K two is a classical negative feedback controller. Okay, if all of the k's are negative, you can just uh, question about your reasoning or uh, the computations, but it's certainly possible to have some sort of minus coefficients in your uh, k matrix or k vector. Okay, now let's check if it's really making our system a closed system in a dead heat sense. Okay, what is g hat? If you remember, uh, it's equal to 1, 0, 0, 2. Okay, minus, what's that? Let's remember. Okay, K1. Okay, okay, let's, let's do it here. Okay, so that's nice. Okay, so 1002. Okay, this is K1. This is K2. This is K1. This is K2. Okay, this is equal to 1002 minus what's K1 minus 1. Okay, K2 is equal to 4 minus 1. This is equal to 4. If I manipulate it, g hat will be equal to, if my computations are correct, minus 4, 1, minus 2. Okay, so is it okay? We will see that. This is, uh, it's kind of hard to see that, but how we can technically uh, verify that uh, the system like, acts like a dead bit uh, control. The uh, easiest way of seeing is that, uh, we can compute the eigenvalues, but other thing is let's compute g square, right? What is g square? G square maps initial conditions at time t equal to zero to the uh, uh, states at k is equal to two. G square is equal to two minus four, one minus two, and it's equal to two minus four, one minus two, and if you say that it's equal to zero, 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 zero. So it means that x of 2 times g times x of 0 is equal to 0, 0 for all possible of initial conditions. Okay, if you start from any initial condition, it means that 
the perturbation will die in only two steps. Okay, so if you, you, you have a reference input, which means that the system will track the reference signal or go to its state, state location in only two steps. Okay, this is the uh, everything that you need to know about state feedback controls uh, design using the direct design approach. 